So hello everybody, uh, I'm Scott Murray, and this is uh, hopefully a time slot appropriate uh, status and roadmap up update on Automotive Grade Linux. Uh, myself, I've been using Linux since not quite their earliest days, but pretty early. I've um, been doing embedded Linux since uh, 2000. Since 2014, I've been working with uh, Consolco Group, which is an embedded Linux services company and one of our supporters. Uh, and just to make a quick shout out that we're hiring if you're looking around. Uh, and since 2016, I've been working on AGL on contract with Consolco. Uh, and we started off, I was doing a lot of Yocto project maintenance, but it sort of grew into um, a jack of all trades for AGL, um, demo development and integration and all kinds of other maintenance stuff. And so I've already managed to get a caricature uh, this week. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so quick agenda. So I'm going to try and very briefly talk about automotive grade Linux, a little bit of the development history, uh, and then get into our roadmap. And, you know, a little bit of a shout out for if you're interested in getting involved at the end. Um, so what is automotive grade Linux? If you've never heard of it before, it is, you know, this is the official tagline, is it a collaborative open source project that is bringing together automakers, suppliers, and technology companies to build a Linux-based open software platform from automotive applications. So, I mean, it boils down to, like, Linux for cars. So it's founded in uh, 2014. There's currently over 150 members. Um, and, you know, this basically runs the gamut of, you know, big OEMs like, you know, Toyota, Subaru, Honda, uh, BMW, I think, is still a member, Mercedes, um, and then a whole bunch of suppliers, so like your Bosch's and folks like that. Uh, so one of the things that makes AG a little different than other projects in this space is it has always had a code-first model, which is trying to get vendors or you know, other folks to just put code up there and open source things, as opposed to some of the other automotive projects are basically specification-driven, where they've sat down and let's plan everything out and then implement. Um, so today, um, it's actually, there are models from Toyota and Subaru that are shipping with AGL-based infotainment. Um, Mazda keep telling us that it's soon. Um, so, you know, this is, you know, a big project that's been going for nine-ish years. Um, what does it actually provide? So right now it's, you know, a base automotive uh, Linux distro uh, built with the Octo project. Uh, there's, you know, sort of a high-level goal of uh, trying to give you like 70 or 80 percent of that platform. Um, initially, we were focused on uh, infotainment in vehicle, uh, sort of your dashboard stuff. Uh, and then over, you know, the last, you know, nine years, we've kind of gotten instrument cluster and telematics. And now actually there's like compute boxes and stuff. Um, there's expert groups, uh, sort of like subunits of AGL that, for all these different you know, topics you know, with open meetings. You don't have to be an AGL member. Uh, you can join in every two weeks. And we do biannual releases, and we shoot for February and July, and sometimes we hit those. Um, uh, so more concretely, um, so you know, we have, you know, we have an open source tree. You can come check it out and do whatever you want. Uh, but, you know, in there, we, you know, in our Yocto builds, we have demo images that show you how you integrate a whole bunch of bits to get something that looks like what you would put in a car. Um, so we have, you know, QT, web app, and Flutter-based, like, infotainment examples. Um, the web app support, um, thanks to Agalia doing a whole bunch of work, uh, uses uh, Chromium with uh, LG's web application manager, uh, which is, you know, sort of an interesting technology. Uh, we also show off like how you take a vendor BSP like from somebody like Renaissance and do uh, you know, an integration. Uh, one of the more recent sort of things is um, AGL's invested quite a bit uh, to build a Wayland compositor with the goal of replacing the sort of typical automotive Weston plus IVI shell plus IVI extensions. Uh, so that's sort of an ongoing thing where you are, there are signs we're getting traction now. Um, the other thing is uh, that's interesting, I think, maybe to this audience, given you know, some of the previous talks, uh, is AGL shows, you know, using pipe wire and wire plumber. Um, we're sort of early to that game, and actually wire plumber AGL funded the initial development of it. 
um, and that was to get in there early and make sure it had enough flexibility to do automotive use cases. Um, so, you know, we're projects nine years old. Uh, until 2020, there was a lot of effort put into sort of trying to put together an application framework that had the whole, sh whole shebang, build, packaging, a whole bunch of sample APIs for things. Um, it had a security uh, scheme using SMAC sort of a ties and derivative. Um, and <clears throat> I'll get into the next slide, but let's just say that this is no longer the case. Um, but, and right now, if you're still interested in that, we do have a sort of LTS release that has that. This is the Lamprey release. But what happened in 2020? So in basically, this sort of started just before the pandemic, but member companies weren't really using the, the uh, application framework that had been you know, built. Um, and they weren't that interested in like, having us put a lot of effort in maintaining it. And it became really clear they were not going to do any extra work to try and move it in the direction of something they would use for products. Uh, so Collabra at the time sort of proposed, let's step back and not try to build a bunch of stuff ourselves, but try to just pick out you know, excellent open source projects and put together something that we can try and convince automakers to use. So examples are things like using uh, protobufs and gRPC you know, for your IPC and, or in-vehicle APIs. Uh, there's an emerging standard called vehicle signal specification. Uh, try and get that sort of seeded into the automotive community. Um, switching off a of SMAC, which basically no one <laughs> uses, to uh, showing how you actually use SE Linux. And, um, Systemd has been a long-standing sort of requirement in AGL, is doing some stuff there with showing like a simple application launching scheme that leverages some of these like newer Systemd features like you know, sandboxing type of stuff. Um, so that was, you know, 2020, we started like this was proposed, and then we sort of started doing that work. So in our recent development, we removed the old application framework. I've done a whole bunch of work to integrate uh, vehicle signaling support with uh, a project that sort of comes out of Bosch, but is not just entirely Bosch. This cooks it off Val project, uh, which is a VSS uh, implementation. Uh, recently switched to their newer implementation that has gRPC API. And we have some example backends of when signal updates come into the, the broker, actually seeing those and actually pushing it out to hardware. Uh, the, the application launcher that exists now. Um, I did a little simple gRPC radio API. And, you know, we've done the work to show here's how you take Meta SC, SC Linux and integrate it into the tree. Uh, but right now we're in permissive mode because it's a huge amount of effort to actually get you know, forcing mode working in a, <laughs> a demo. Um, and also the, the AGO compositor has been some work to actually wire up a gRPC API to it. Um, but that's not all. Uh, so another big topic that's sort of, I've had actually had discussions this week with people here, is um, we started doing Flutter-based demo apps, uh, which is, it com comes out of Toyota. They're actually very gung-ho on Flutter, and they're going to use it in product. Uh, and so they've helped us get you know, stuff integrated. So we now have like Flutter demo that has like the full you know, home screen and HVAC and dashboard. And uh, we had some Google Summer of Code students do apps. And so we actually have a dashboard, like instrument cluster demo, that's a Flutter app. Um, the web apps uh, sort of uh, infrastructure, a guy you're switching us over to using uh, Ceph, the sort of more open source, uh, I guess, shared collaboration project of reusing Chromium. Uh, so that's sort of landed already. Um, uh, Pidge has talked the other day about the system container stuff. That's this LXC stuff. That's actually an ongoing development project inside AGL. As well, I've also recently done a simple like QMU and KVM demo of running uh, infotainment and instrument cluster on the same board. And uh, Jan Simone Muller, um, who some of you might know from embedded stuff, uh, he uh, works in AGL full time. He's uh, recently been given some boards by Sci5 and has like, now added some RISC-V stuff into the tree. Uh, so I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> uh, so 
that's sort of like the recent like two and a half, three years of development is those couple of slides. And so, you know, we've been pretty busy and in, hopefully in a better place where we've sort of gotten off the let's reinvent the world and convince automakers to help us. It's now it's like automakers are like in a more engaged a little bit like Toyota and Panasonic and a couple other ones, maybe not as much, but actually like they're saying we're going to use this technology and we want to see it in AGL. So there's a little more technology demonstrator focus now. So it's, I think we're in a better place. Um, so our roadmap is sort of like an evolution of these last couple of years. Um, Panasonic are really big in virtualization and bird IO technology. And so we're like keep expanding using bird IO, um, you know, to get like a nice upstream hypervisor demo basically requires us to use Zen. So that's on the next page, but, but we do have, we know that uh, Lenaro and I believe Red Hat are working on some of the Bird IO uh, automotive sort of protocols. So CAN and Sound are supposedly coming soon. Um, <clears throat> recently, there's been a sort of some talk about we're going to redo our Flutter apps with a nice fancy UI because I'm not a graphics programmer. <laughs> uh, so that's also going to involve likely a discussion of like documenting a really good workflow of you know, how you go from a design tool and actually push all the way down into production. Um, as well, uh, this huge interest right now in what's called software-defined vehicle. Um, basically, it's like sticking cloud technology into the car. Um, and so we've had one, an expert group for like three and a half, four years where it's been discussed. And a lot of it is, is everyone has a different concept of what that means. So. Uh, it's once there is a consensus, we are likely to build a demo setup of some kind and actually show integrating, hopefully not Kubernetes, but <laughs> technology in that space into AGL to show how you do it. Um, so the, we've had a little bit of a focus in the last year on like trying to you know add some more hardware support for people to do testing on. Uh, so I just got my Beagle Play and Beagle Bone AI sixty four on Thursday last Thursday. Uh, so that's going to be coming soon. Um, and then Raspberry Pi 5 now, I assume, will be, hopefully, as soon as we can get our hands on them. Um, as well, you know, it's this sort of, I mentioned Panasonic. So they've been done a bunch of work on a th technology they call Unified HMI, um, which actually is very interesting in some respects. It's different than what you see others do and for sort of similar things. So they are using uh, Vertio GPU as a transport between socks. Uh, so in their demos, they basically have nice things where they can actually transfer displays around in the car. And it's a, a bit forward-looking sort of thing where it's you know these envisions of autonomous cars that have 10 screens and stuff. So uh, they've actually, that's in our uh, Garrett right now under review that this is going to be merged. Um, and it's going to be probably be an interesting demo once we get it all working. Um, on the gRPC front, I, you know, we've had a couple simple examples. Uh, I'm likely to be the person that has to implement uh, like network and Bluetooth and mixer configuration APIs. And there won't be likely, I mean, these are kind of more like technology demonstrators for the, the automotive folks, but for us it allows us to take our Flutter and web apps and sort of actually plumb things together to have an interesting demo. Um, so that's some of that's coming in the next six months. Um, and I mentioned Zen, uh, so there's been an ongoing thing for the last two years where people would like us to demo Zen with AGL and also having an RTOS in there as well. Uh, and basically the only real blocker for us is that Zen doesn't have Vertio GPU support right now. Uh, it's hopefully soon, uh, the AM, folks from AMD have been pushing it for the last eight months, I believe. They're up to V5 of their patch set. Um, so hopefully that lands, and then we'll be in a position to do a hopefully somewhat generic demo with Zen. Because um, people do demo it, but they have pretty hacked up solutions to make it work. Um, and of course, documentation improvements, like all open source projects. Uh, there's on, I'm personally been tasked <laughs> to spend time in the next two months doing a bunch of documentation. Um, so that's, I managed to somehow fit that in there. All right, so 
There's a couple links here if you grab the slides. Um, Walt Miner gave a talk at our all members meeting in, in Tokyo uh, two months ago, which is a little more detailed and has like timelines and releases and stuff. Uh, as well, there's like a high ar level ar architecture talk that Walt gave, and I did a little more detailed stuff on how our, we're using gRPC uh, last fall. So if you're interested in these things, there's some links. Uh, and, you know, we're an open source project, so we have a documentation site. Uh, we also use Sphinx, I think uh, the Beagle, I think Drew mentioned they're using Sphinx now. Um, and, you know, we have a wiki. Uh, the mailing list is open to anybody, you know, it's, you know, there's no membership requirements. Uh, and we have open weekly Zoom calls. Uh, actually, the slide's wrong. It's Thursdays now. Uh, it changed on me. Um, and there, the meeting schedule is actually open. It's, we're, we're uh, because it's a Linux Foundation project, it's all up on groups.io, so you can jump on there. And there's also a uh, IRC channel on Libera. Um, so that wasn't too bad, actually. Channeled my inner Steve Rodstedt. <laughs> So it, I, I'm going to stick around if, you know, I know we're at the end of the day, so if folks, you know, want, want to take off. But if you have questions, go ahead. Hi, Scott. I'm yep. only going to mildly troll you here. Um, my only question is you say that this is out there. Do you know what the, um, if there's like an over-the-air update solution that either has been adopted by the manufacturers or that's going on in AGL? And I guess my other yeah, question it's, it's is... Yeah, over-the-air update is one of... The, we have like a handful of things where we, you know, regularly ask the members, do you want us to integrate something to show it in AGL? And so for a period of time, uh, ATS were a member, and we had an integration. They, they actually sort of funded a little bit of development there to actually have... Um, the hell? The, 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 it was Meta Updater. It's I forget the actual tool name, but they, it, it's like an OS tree based thing and all that stuff. So that was there, and it was we, you know, they weren't a big player, and we knew, I think, that none of the big OEMs were using their stuff. But we had a demo you could turn on and actually do like updates. Cool. But then they got bought by uh, here, and here relatively quickly killed off that part of the, <laughs> the, the business. So. Uh, we, we've pulled that out actually because it's there's not really a path to setting up server very easily to use it. Um, and I have I bring it up. I'm like you know there's Rock and SW Update and stuff that we could show. Uh, but pretty much what we hear is they either do something custom or they hot, or they do like a big like you know like Amazon fleet management type of stuff. So it's not anything so far that we've gotten like a, a nod to, to integrate an open source example. So, so, so my other question, and this is where I troll you, is do you know how these companies are doing GPL compliance? Not right off. It is, it comes up now and again, and I, especially now that we're on, you know, basically versions of like Open Embedded slash Yocto that where, you know, there's not as much of a clear support for building without GPLv3 stuff. Uh, and, it, you know, it's very clear automotive manufacturers, they do not want to ship vehicles with GPLv3 bits. Uh, but it has come up, like they haven't really been too vocal about it the last couple of years, and I don't quite know what they're doing in-house. They all do very significant like code scanning and license validation, so like we see that as an, like we know they're doing that, but I don't know what they do build-wise to get things to work. Because I mean these days, Especially if you're doing like complicated things, especially you know we're going in the path that people are going to run you know some type of container engine, and you know, in, if you're using systemd, which we pretty much everybody tells us they are, I mean you can't easily avoid using Bash, and Bash is GPLv3. So uh, at least you know if you use a version that's modern and secure. So I'm not sure. I mean it's it's actually a good question, and we should probably in the next year probably try and twist people's arms and. See, because I mean, we have a relationship with Yocto. Uh, Jan Simone has been on the advisory board and stuff like that, and so it is. I know from you know what the Yocto folks say that like it is an ongoing thing where there's a concern about having that ability in Yocto, and we you know likely AGL members need it. So it's just you know there's only so many hours in the day, unfortunately. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, thank you very All much, right. Scott. Thank you. That's my, my laptop.